Welcome to the course Business Analytics and Data Mining Modeling Using R. So in the uh, previous few lectures, uh, we have com completed uh, our discussion on classification trees. So in this particular, we will move on to regression trees. So uh, before that, uh, let us uh, discuss few more points about classification uh, trees. So uh, out of classification trees, we get some simplified classification rules. So, uh, each terminal node or leaf node that we get in our final tree model that is equivalent to a classification rule. So, uh, for any particular tree, we can always uh, uh, we can always formulate based on the final tree model, right? Based on the final tree model, we can always formulate the classification rules. For example, let us say this is income less than something 10, then this is let us say age less than uh, 35, then in this fashion. So, classification uh, rule is going to be like if uh, income less than uh, 10 and uh, age less than 35, then uh, yeah, age, age less than 35, then let us say this is uh, the, uh, if it is, if it is, uh, no, let us say greater, if, if less than goes this side, and greater than go, uh, all the points greater than this go, go this side, then uh, it will come here and then age less than 35 will, will, will come here. So, observation will fall here. Let us say this is class 1. So, we can say then class 1. So, these kind of simplified classification rules we can get out of a tree model. So, that, that uh, gives us the ease of implementation where these rules are very easy to understand so, these classification rules very easy to understand and easy to implement. Now, uh, when we have build a, uh, you know, when we uh, finally build a, uh, you know, select a, build and select a final tree model, then uh, all the terminal nodes as we talked about, they will represent uh, some classification rules. Now, uh, these, uh, these uh, classification rules can be simplified further, further as uh, you might have, as we might, as we have seen in previous uh, lectures, different exercise that we have done. The same variable ma might uh, reoccur again at some level. So, let us say income comes here again, right. So, uh, therefore, there are going to be uh, two conditions on income, two conditions uh, based on income variable in your classification rule, right. So, in those situations, we uh, might look at those values and we can simplify the rules further, right. Similarly, uh, some rules. Uh, uh, you know, out of all the rules that we might have based on, uh, you know, uh, number of leap nodes, we can further identify the redundant rule. So, if one rule is applied, uh, the second rule which might be kind of, uh, you know, sub rule of uh, uh, a particular rule. So, those uh, rules can be identified. So, those redundant rules can be identified and removed from the list. Now, let us start our discussion on regression trees. So, uh, regression trees outcome variable should be numerical. So, classification trees because that was for the classification task. Uh, so, typically we were uh, looking to classify, uh, looking to predict the class of a new observation. Now, in this case regression trees, uh, the outcome variable should be a numerical. So, we would look to predict the value of a new observations. So, as far as steps uh, to build tree models, uh, tree model are concerned, they are uh, quite similar to uh, that of classification trees. Few differences are there, for example, prediction step, so that is of course uh, going to be different uh, from the uh, classification step, right. And the impurity measures, they are going to be certainly different in, uh, uh, in the prediction task and the performance matrix uh, are also different. So, let us uh, discuss uh, these differences one by one. So, first one prediction steps. So, a value of a leap uh, node is a predicted value for a new observation that fell in that leaf node. So, in a regression tree, uh, once uh, when we want to predict uh, the value of a new observation. So, again just like the classification trees, uh, that particular observation will also be dropped down from the root of uh, root node of that tree and it will uh, keep following a particular sequence and finally, it will reach to a terminal node. So, the value of that terminal or leaf node is going to be the predicted value of that particular new observation. Now, 
how the value of a, a leaf node is decided uh, in a regression tree. As we know that in case of classification tree, it is the majority voting that is taken and uh, based on that class is assigned. In case of regression tree, uh, we compute uh, average of all training partition recalls which fall in that particular same uh, you know terminal node. So, value of a leaf node is computed by taking average of training partition records constituting that leaf node. So, when we build the tree using the training partition uh, points, so uh, the, uh, the training partition record which are going to be part of that particular leaf node right uh, which will uh, uh, you know fell to drop down to that particular leaf node. So, average of uh, you know those uh, training partition observation would actually be the predicted value for that uh, leaf node and any new observation uh, that falls uh, that uh, when dropped down from the tree if it is uh, uh, falls down to that particular leaf node the predicted value for that observation is going to be the value of that uh, leaf node. So, this is uh, difference in the prediction steps otherwise in terms of building the tree the steps are very much similar to what we have discussed for classification trees. Uh, now, let us uh, discuss uh, impurity measures. So, uh, impurity measures that we have uh, used for classification tree were Guinea and uh, entropy. Now, here in regression trees, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the impurity measure is different. Here, we use some of square deviations uh, from mean of uh, leaf node. So, uh, once uh, uh, we reach to a leaf node, uh, right for all the observations that are there, all the observations uh, that of uh, training partition record any parties that uh, are part of that particular leaf node right during the tree building process. So, uh, me, so their deviation from the mean value, so their deviations from the mean value that actually becomes uh, the metric impurity measure. So, sum of a square deviation from mean of leaf node. So, this is quite equivalent to uh, squared errors since uh, mean value of le leaf node right uh, the training partition records and their mean value is also taken as the predicted value right. So, therefore, the deviations are uh, from the actual value deviation are between actual and predicted values. So, therefore, this is uh, can also this is also equivalent to squared errors. Now, uh, lowest impurity is 0 and, uh, and this will uh, occur when all the observations that fell in a leaf node have same actual value of outcome variable. So, all the observations uh, that fell in a particular leaf node right, let us say there are 10 observation 1, 2, 3 up to 10 and if they have same value let us say 0.5 then mean will also be 0.5 and therefore, the uh, deviation would become 0. So, lowest impurity would be recorded when all the observations uh, in a particular leaf node, in a particular leaf node, uh, they have uh, you know uh, they have same actual value right. Now, uh, before uh, discussing uh, further on card, so let us uh, do a regression tree exercise using our so, let us go back to our R studio environment. Now, this is the code for regression trees, script for regression trees. Let us load this. So, for regression trees, uh, we are going to use, use the cars uh, data set that we have used in previous uh, techniques, some of previous techniques as well. So, let us import this particular data set. You can see 79 observations of 11 variables. Uh, let us remove NA columns and let us look at first 6 observations. So, you are uh, already familiar with this particular data set. You can see brand model, manufacturing year, fuel type, SR price that is showroom price, KM price, transmissions, owners, uh, airbags, and C price. So, uh, as we have been doing for this particular data set and for previous techniques as well. Uh, let us compute this age variable uh, out of uh, manufacturing year. So, this is age variable. Let us uh, add this to the data frame. Now, let us take up a backup of the data frame. And we, since we are not interested in uh, uh, first few columns and also C underscore price, so we will get rid of them. 
So now what we'll have is uh, these many variables. So just uh, eight variables, 79 observation. So you can see fuel type is appropriately specified as factor variable, three levels, right? CNG region after toll. The others, SR price, KM price, uh, uh, then we have transmission. This should actually be uh, a factor variable because, in, but since it is uh, in numeric code format, so therefore we'll have to change it to a factor variable. As we know that uh, um, any variable, any categorical variable, if it is having values in, uh, in, in text format like CNG, diesel, plateau, so it will automatically be stored as a factor variable in our environment. Now for transmission, we will have to uh, do it. And other variables are fine, owners, airbag, airbag and age, they are numeric variable. So let us uh, just change this one, transmission as dot factor. And you would see in the uh, new output of a structure uh, function, transmission is also changed to factor with two labels. Now uh, let us perform the partitioning. So we will uh, go for 60 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent for training partition and uh, 40 percent for test partition. So let us create these uh, two partitions here. Once this is done, uh, we can go ahead and build our model. So again, the same package, uh, same uh, uh, function that we are going to use, our part. So uh, let us uh, load this particular library, this particular package. Now, if we look at the uh, our part function, the arguments are quite uh, similar to what we have used in uh, classification tree exercises, but one difference, now method has changed. So uh, method has changed to ANOVA. So for regression trees, we have to specify method as ANOVA and uh, for classification trees, the method was class. Now other things are quite similar, right? So other things do not change. You can see x well value is specified as 0. By default, is it is 10, 10 as we have uh, talked about in previous lectures because uh, we want to first develop the, build the full grown tree and therefore we would like to have x well value as 0 and also CP value as 0 uh, because uh, we would like to, for the same region, we would like to build the full grown tree. So let us run this and the model is built. Now let us look at the number of DCN nodes 46 in this case, number of terminal nodes 47. Right? So these are the number of nodes uh, in the uh, full grown tree model. Now what we will do, we will straight uh, away, we will move to the uh, uh, pruning process. The pruning process as we talked about is of course uh, similar to uh, what we did in classification trees. So first uh, we will uh, record the node numbering. So as we have talked about that node numbering is uh, in a particular order in, uh, in, 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 a, in R and that uh, you can understand from the uh, frame attribute of R part object. So uh, let us uh, compute this. So these are the node numbers as you can see uh, in uh, as we have explained in the previous uh, lectures as well. So node numbering uh, in our environment typically happens in this fashion. Uh, Let us, uh, this is, uh, let suppose this is our tree. So node numbering typically happens in this fashion, one and it will go like this, two and this fashion. And then again it will move back once uh, the tree uh, full level is achieved, it will move back and move back and uh, in this fashion uh, the node numbering is uh, recorded uh, for a particular tree. So as you can see 1, 2, 4, 8, so node numbers 1, 2, 4, 8 will be in the left part of the tree. So uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 will keep on going there but 64 it ends there then we will have to go back to 65 the nearest uh, you know uh, node and then 65 then we again go uh, down 130 and uh, in that fashion. Uh, then we go to 260 to 520, 521, then again we will have to go back. So in this fashion, the node numbering happens as we saw in the, uh, here in the board. So uh, as we have, as uh, we have done in uh, classification entries, we will create this data frame. So first uh, uh, column would record these node numbers, then we will record the uh, variables that have been used for a split and then we will record the complexity for all those, all these nodes. So let us uh, do this. So you can see 93, total number of uh, nodes in the tree are 93 and the same number of node, uh, node uh, rows are present in this particular data frame. So as we have done in case of uh, 
uh, classification trees, we will first get rid of the uh, leaf nodes. So, the code is quite similar, uh, actually same. Uh, so, let us get rid of these uh, nodes and you would see in the DFP1, we have just 46 observations which are nothing uh, which are same as the number of uh, decision nodes that we had uh, uh, that we have in the tree. You can see 46 were the number of decision nodes and the same number of observation you can see here in DFP1. So, now in DFP1, we have just the decision nodes, leaf, leaf, leaf nodes have been uh, those rows have been uh, removed. Now, nest, nested sequence of splits based on complexity. So, as we uh, did finally for the classification trees and that uh, first uh, ordering would be based on complexity values and then we will like to further uh, order the uh, node numbers. If a particular number of nodes are having same uh, value, same complexity value, then for those uh, group of, uh, you know, those uh, uh, group of uh, uh, rows, we would like to order them based on their node numbering. So, uh, uh, let us execute this and we will uh, get the sequence. Let us also change the row names. You can see 46 are the total number of rows now as we can see. So, 46 decision nodes. Now, uh, these if you look at the complexity value, this has been sorted. So, uh, this is decreasing order. So, highest complexity value first in the root node then root uh, no, node number 2, then node number 5, 11 and then 4. So, you would see in this fashion. Then as we move down, we can again even for regression tree, we can see that uh, some of the rows are having the same complexity values. You can see here, this is same complexity value for 19 and 39, right. So, there uh, again as we have done for classification trees, we would first like to remove 39 and then 19. So, uh, therefore, it is uh, it was sorted same for classification trees, same for regression trees. Now, uh, we can find out similar types of uh, groups of uh, object, uh, rows here which have the same complexity value here once again you can see same complexity value. So, the sequence has to be based on node numbers because we would like to have a smaller subtree. So, the nodes with higher uh, number would be should be pruned first. Similarly, as we go down, we can find many more nodes having same complexity value. So, therefore, ordering has to be accordingly, pruning has to be accordingly. Here also, you can find that so, everything uh, seems uh, to be uh, appropriately uh, ordered here now. So, once this is done, now we can record another task to argument which will have the desired sequence of nodes to be pruned off. So, we can have a look at the task 2 again. So, this is probably the, uh, this is the, uh, the desired sequence of nodes to be pruned off. So, you can see uh, the pruning will start from the last node that is uh, this one. 131, this would be pruned first, then 351, 260, and then 311. So, in this fashion, pruning uh, would uh, pruning of full grown tree would happen. However, in the code that we are going to run, we will uh, uh, build all such models. So, all models with the uh, you know uh, no decision nodes with the uh, one uh, node that is uh, this one, first one, then two nodes that is first and second, with three nodes that is one, two, and five. Then 4 node that is 1 and 1, 2, uh, 2, 5, 11. So, in this fashion, we will keep on building our model. So, uh, let us uh, start uh, executing our code for this or the same. So, let us initialize i, then you can see uh, these three variables which are being used to either store the uh, record the uh, different models or to record the scoring of uh, for scoring for different partitions. So, let us initialize them. And uh, because this is a uh, regression tree, so the metric uh, that we are going to use. So, earlier in the classification trees, we were uh, computing the uh, misclassification error and we looked at the misclassification error to identify to find out the uh, minimum error tree and also best uh, prune tree. In this case, we will look at, we will use the RMSE value. So, we are going to use this particular package R minor. So, let us load this. Uh, so, that we will be computing the RMSE value within the loop for each model and uh, then that is going to be used for finding 
the minimum and best boundary. So, the code is quite similar to what we had uh, uh, for the uh, classification tree with one change. Uh, Let us uh, so, you can see a predict function now you would see type is vector because we would like to predict the values right instead of class and uh, in uh, computing uh, the error for uh, different partition and for different models you can see RMSE value is being computed right. So, these are few noticeable changes uh, in regression trees in comparison to what we did in uh, uh, classification trees. So, let us run this uh, loop. But before running this, let us uh, load the importance function that is part of this code. This function, let us uh, so once this is loaded, we can go back to the loop and run it. So, you can see uh, here in the environment section. You can see mod is split V large list 46 elements. So, we had 46 uh, decision nodes. So, the same number of uh, models have been developed, right? And uh, scoring also, uh, test partition and training partition also. So, uh, depending on the number of observations, so uh, we you can see list of uh, 46 here and list of 46 here for all 46 models. We have the uh, scoring right. So, once this is done uh, as we did for in the classification trees uh, in the last uh, you know model that we developed in classification trees we will get this data frame having a number of decision nodes uh, in the same fashion as we did uh, last time for the classification trees and uh, then the error train v and error, error test v. So, let us uh, create this data frame. Now, uh, this will have uh, the all the rows starting from 0 decision node to uh, the uh, last one, one decision node, and for that we will have to for to include all model with all decision nodes. We will have to bring the full grown tree uh, information details, so that we are doing now. So last row we are creating manually. You can see here uh, that uh, we are scoring off uh, the training partition using the full grown tree model, and then uh, that is added to the data frame. And, the, and then we are scoring the test partition and we are adding this information to the data frame. Now, we have the data frame. Now, you can see we had 46 uh, decision tree and we have 47 models and their performance. So, first model is model with 0 decision nodes that is just a uh, root node acting as a terminal node and uh, the corresponding error values also you can we can see. Then uh, as we uh, move down, uh, we can uh, see that uh, models with different number of decision nodes. Now, uh, for the training partition, uh, you can see training error it is highest uh, when we have 0 decision node and it keeps on decreasing and uh, till when we have the uh, 46 decision nodes, it uh, reaches 0, right. So, uh, this error finally decreases to 0 for the testing partition. You can see that it starts from this particular value 2.56. It keeps on decreasing and it uh, decreases, I think, to this value. This seems to be the minimum value in this particular row, and then it again it starts increasing, right? So, uh, once the we are uh, have this particular table, this particular data frame, now let us go ahead and plot uh, the curve uh, for error rate for these two uh, partition training and uh, test. Let us look at the range. 1000 and uh, here 256. So, within 0 to uh, 1000 we will have these two plots. Now, uh, we would see some uh, differences uh, with respect to regression trees. So, you can see that uh, uh, training partition it starts with a quite high error then it keeps on decreasing till it becomes 0. For uh, the validation partition, uh, it again it uh, comes down to a minimum level, and then it starts increasing, right? So, uh, uh, so from this we need to find out the point where the error on RMSE value is minimum for the uh, validation partition. So, so uh, this can be done using this uh, uh, code, uh, which we use for classification tree as well. So, let's find out the minimum error on validation partition using this column, third column. So, this is the value the same that we identified in the label in the table 
right so this is the value you can see number of decision node corresponding number of decision nodes are five so with five decision nodes we get this uh, minimum value right same thing would should come in this code five you can see so that has been recorded look at the let's uh, look at the standard error so this is the standard error to so find out the best uh, prune tree uh, within this uh, uh, within one standard error so we'll let's compute this for value so uh, the uh, uh, the error should be less than 0.98 but as we have uh, seen in the table uh, let's look at the go back to the table you can see my 0.95 and as we go upwards uh, in the table we don't uh, uh, see any uh, any row where the value is within that 0.98 uh, you know that uh, less than that so within one standard deviation of this per value 0.9531 so therefore, it seems that uh, best prune tree would also be same as minimum error tree. So let's uh, find out by this code, using this code. Let's run this. You can see it's 5. So uh, the best prune tree is also the same as uh, minimum error tree. So what we'll do, uh, create the task argument again. So in this case, we'll like to uh, remove, uh, we'll like to keep just the 5 decision trees in the model best prune tree model and sniff off all the remaining nodes. So let us create this, we will get this particular and uh, let us load this library r part dot plot. So now we can plot this tree. So this is the tree that we have out of this regression tree exercise. So if we uh, look at this tree, uh, the first uh, uh, root node uh, there, the first split, uh, first predictor and split value combination is uh, comes from KM. So KM greater than 23.5, right. So uh, if yes, then this side. So all the observation with that greater than this value, they will come this side and then we get immediately we get the uh, terminal node on the right side right child and for then in this side then we have sr price and uh, within sr price so this should be less than 10.475 uh, then uh, of course we go th th this side uh, again we have sr price so sr price kilometer is seems to be the important topmost uh, you know most important variable and then followed by SR price, which is it comes at second level. Then again, we see kilometer. So if, uh, then again, we see SR price. So you ca you can see that we have uh, five decision nodes, and out of these five decision nodes, SR price is occurring thrice, and KM is occurring twice. So KM and SR price, out of all the variables that we had, KM and SR price are eventually determining uh, the uh, the uh, this particular tree model. So KM and SR price seems to be the most important variables for this uh, prediction task. As you can see uh, at each uh, uh, terminal node as well, uh, we have some value, right. So this value once uh, for a new observation, if you would like to classify it, uh, the observation has to be dropped down from this particular tree and uh, once it reaches to a particular leaf node, these nodes, uh, last uh, you know nodes, leaf nodes. So that the value of uh, these leaf nodes is going to be the predicted value. So let us come back. Now the same exercise that we uh, followed through uh, you know by minimizing uh, error on validation partition and for different uh, node models with different number of decision nodes, uh, you know we can have alternative mechanism which is quite similar uh, using uh, R part spoon function. So what we will do, x value is now 10 as you can see and uh, we will build this model. Once this is done, let us look at the CP table. So this is the T CP table and that is part of uh, this uh, output. So here we need to identify the row where x error is minimum, right. So that we can do using this particular code. So uh, corresponding CP value would be recorded 0.012 Five zero. We look at the table. We look at the table. Uh, so I think uh, 
this is the error that is the minimum value you can see from the value itself x error minimum value is 0 0.7478825 and then corresponding cp value we can also see now this uh, value can be used to uh, prune the tree so you can see number of split 6 right so uh, this can be used now uh, we can also plot cp for this model and based on this as we did for classification tree as we talked about uh, uh, that a similar approach uh, wherein uh, uh, the uh, first uh, uh, tree which is uh, below this particular line uh, you know that can be uh, used as as the uh, best prune tree however all the points are below this particular line so the model is not performing as well on the validation partition one specific region for the same is that we have just 79 observations in the full in the uh, total uh, full data set and out of that few are being used for the training partition and remaining for test partition so because of the smaller sample size uh, this kind of result we are uh, getting there now even within this uh, as we can see uh, you know probably this uh, uh, particular point which is corresponding to uh, six uh, nodes uh, can be the uh, can be the uh, prune tree as per this uh, particular plot so we'll use uh, the value recorded in cp1 that is corresponding to minimum x error value to build a model and uh, this is the model that we get if we look at the this particular model uh, you would see that uh, this is uh, uh, there is uh, one more node in comparison to what we saw in our exercise owners is also there but otherwise we uh, can see that km sr price uh, these seems to be two important variables and then one extra node owners is also there so this is from the this is this particular model is from using the by uh, using the uh, r parse prune now we can look at the number of node dc node 6 and 7 so with this uh, we uh, completed our exercise in r for this now let's discuss a few more comments a few more important things related to card algorithm so uh, some of the uh, advantages of card algorithm are that uh, can be used as a variable selection approach uh, no variable transformation is required uh, you don't need to transform your variable and derive new variables because the way tree is built uh, using partitioning approach that recursive partitioning approach uh, eliminates uh, any requirement for variable transformation because the tree is essentially going to be the same because it is the midpoints values uh, and the uh, that are used or subsets in case of categorical variables that are used to create partition so therefore uh, variable transformation is not required robust to outliers so because again uh, recursive partitioning approach that uh, doesn't rely on the specific values of outliers therefore uh, the model is going to remain to robust to outliers non-linear and non-parametric techniques so we did not uh, make any assumption about the uh, relationship between uh, outcome variable and uh, set of predictors uh, right so this is non-linear no parameter that we have used handle missing values so again for the same region because of the recursive partitioning approach and because we look to use mid values uh, to find out the possible split points so missing values can also be very well handled using this uh, technique now uh, let's look at the, uh, some of the problems uh, of card some of the disadvantages or issues with card algorithm sense to to sample data changes as we have uh, seen in our classification tree exercises and regression tree exercises if the in the regression tree we had very small sample very small sample and we saw that the performance on validation partition was not uh, good and uh, in case of uh, classification trees we had large enough sample size however every time we used to run because of the uh, different observation that become part of the training partition the uh, tree model used to change uh, full grown tree model used to change not even best prune tree a full grown uh, full uh, boundary model used to change uh, right and uh, therefore uh, this particular technique is sensitive to sample data changes now if we look at the uh, uh, the uh, approach of uh, cart uh, you would see that base main uh, approach is recursive partitioning and then pruning so uh, uh, recursive or partitioning approach uh, in a way uh, captures the predictor's strength as a single variable 
and that is actually model and not uh, as part of a group of predictors. The modeling is does not consider the strength of a group of uh, a set of predictors rather it relies on the uh, uh, predictor strength as a single variable right. So, uh, that is uh, that could be one drawback right. So, there could be uh, some set of predictors which uh, put together might give better performance using other techniques right. So, relies on strength of single variable. Other uh, comments on CART uh, might not fit linear structures or relationships uh, between predictors right. So, uh, so that is one uh, problem. So, uh, if the uh, typically it is understood that uh, card procedures if the if the partition because the recursive partitioning approach is used if the vertical and horizontal uh, separation kind of scenario exists in a particular data set then the card algorithm is going to perform uh, uh, well. However, if the partitioning is you know some diagonal line uh, kind of uh, partition would be more suitable for the data then probably this technique is not going to give uh, better results. So, in that case solution could be uh, we ha can derive new predictors which actually uh, you know which are actually based on the hypothesized relationship if some diagonal line is uh, a better separator for observation then probably a new variable can be derived to uh, you know uh, to uh, express the same and that can be used in the card models. So, uh, uh, another problem another problem with card algorithm is uh, it requires large data set. Uh, so, robustness uh, depends a lot on large data set and even then uh, every run the changes could be there. Uh, high computation time, uh, so because of we are using high uh, large data set recursive partitioning is there and pruning is there. So, much of sorting uh, related exercises are to be a part of this process. So, because of this uh, it uh, requires high computation time. So, with this we conclude our discussion on classification and regression trees. Uh, in the next lecture we will start our uh, discussion on logistic regression. Thank you.